Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is yet another epic rant. And, uh... <laughs> it's a rematch. <laughs> it, for some reason, this film didn't stay down. It didn't stay dead. So, now, I need to take a proton stream and blast its fucking face off and, uh, put it out of its misery and put the final nail in the coffin for good. And that film is the disaster of epic proportions that is the 2016 film Ghostbusters. Which I like to call Ball Busters because it just busts your balls for the entire running time. And before I get around to kicking this film's ass... I want to give a special shout out to a longtime friend and subscriber of mine, Jonathan, for requesting this epic rant redux. And for those of you who uh, would like to see my thoughts on another film, a TV show, or a topic in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below, and I will try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now back to Ball Busters. I saw this film in the theater in 2016. I saw it in IMAX. It was incredibly idiotic, unfunny, and hard to sit through. It was one of the worst theatrical experiences of my life, and it still is, because I was just completely and totally miserable throughout it. I found no enjoyment out of the movie whatsoever. And I thought, okay, maybe after all these years, maybe if I revisit the film, it won't be as bad because I've seen some other really shitty films and recent memories. So maybe this isn't as bad as those movies. Maybe it's just, it's bad, but not in the same level of suck as some of the other things that I've seen. No, no, this film is so bad and so awful. Uh, it, it could cause mass hysteria just playing in a theater in front of a wide audience if it ever decided to disgrace cinemas ever again. And I even checked out the extended version because maybe there might be some extra stuff in the extended cut that might might fix some problems, might help the character development. Maybe some of the extra jokes are funny. No. No, it just made an already boring and tedious film even more long and tedious and terrible. And I definitely would not recommend watching the extended cut unless you're a masochist. But anyway, this film has a myriad, a multitude of fucking issues so many issues that, honestly, this film is hands down one of the worst films of the 2010s. And I know for some people that might be an exaggeration, but th this is my opinion and I'm sticking to it. I really do feel this is one of the worst films of the 2010s. It encapsulates everything that is wrong with a modern reboot or new take on a franchise. And... It's just unbelievably lazy and pathetic to its core. It's directed by Paul Fagg. And this is the film that exposed Paul as a fraud. As a two-bit hustler. A fraud. Because prior to this film, he had directed films like Bridesmaids, The Heat, Spy. All films that I honestly enjoyed and I felt were some of the better comedies from the 2010s. And then he signed on to direct this film. And after its release, it just exposed him as a hack. As a director who was never as talented as he may have seemed. A director who rode the coattails of his talented co-stars and friends. And that's really about it. I mean, there are a lot of directors out there where... 
it seems like they are really talented, like they are really good, and they're a rising star in Hollywood, and then they get one project that just shows all their flaws and their faults to the entire world, and that was it. Their run was over. It was like a car crash. They were driving down the road, and open road, and everything seemed like it was great and wonderful, and then BAM! It's over. Just head-on collision. And that's what happened with Paul Fagg. And you know what? He deserved it. Because the way that he handled criticism for this film, the way that he injected his one-sided views on Ghostbusters fans into the film itself was disgraceful. It was absolutely 100% disgraceful and unacceptable to me that that a major film director was so unable to handle any form of criticism that he would attack an entire fan base within the scope of a film that's a part of the same franchise that he's supposed to be appealing to. And if that isn't bad enough, his direction sucks too. Like, his direction in this film is very flat, it's lifeless, it's lethargic, it's dead. There's no real energy to it. The energy that's there is very forced and manufactured. It doesn't feel genuine like the energy in the first and the second films. There's a lot of manic energy going on, but it just feels unfocused and chaotic and irritating to watch. Unlike the energy in the first two films. Fake's direction in this just makes me appreciate Ivan Reitman's work in the first two films even more than I already do. Because it just showcases how legitimately great Reitman's direction was and how what he did was not as easy as he made as he made it appear to be. Especially when it comes to finding the right balance of what your ideas are for the film and for the story and for the the content and the cast. Because Paul Feig just let his cast run loose in this film. Just run he just let them run wild, run rampant all over the set, essentially take control of the movie. And whatever he added to the film was inept. And he was unable to rein his cast in. He was laughing at every joke that they made. He offered no criticism. He after he offered no, uh, no instances where he would tell them to hold back or to go into a different direction. No, he's a big reason why this film is so shitty, because as a comedy, it's such a massive failure because it's not funny. And a big reason why it's not funny is because there's so many of these jokes that just drag and just go on forever. There's so many of these other jokes that are just stupid and not clever and not witty. I mean, he's the guy who thought wonton jokes were so hilarious that let's have that be a running gag throughout the movie. And he's also the guy that could have put a massive kibosh or block on the absurd amount of nastiness in the film's script but no he just embraced it like he's a fucking troll on the internet which is ironic because there are scenes in this film where it's trying to fight back and lash out against these internet trolls and it's so funny because that's exactly what Paul Feig is doing. He's adopting their tactics. 
he could have done something to say, hey, this is a little bit too mean, a little bit too nasty, having all these scenes where every male in this film is an asshole, a snooty prick, or a dumbass. Maybe we need to tone it down a little bit. No, he didn't do that. Because he was triggered, and that bled into his performance, it bled into the directing, it bled into the entire film and just poisoned it. It poisoned it at its core. It never had a fucking chance because the film just completely missed the entire point of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is supposed to be a fun film, a fun series of adventures with characters busting ghosts and cracking jokes along the way while there are some serious elements of horror and some other things. That's the other thing that Paul Feig really dropped the boat on. Nothing about this film is scary. Nothing about this film is chilling. Nothing about this film gives you the creeps. Uh, it's about as scary as a children's book. In fact, I've seen, I've read children's books that are scarier than this. I mean, a fucking pop-up book would probably provide more scares than Paul Feig in Ghostbusters. Oh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Ball Busters, 2016. So yeah, Paul Feig's direction is a clinic in what not to do when it comes to providing a new installment in a beloved franchise. It really is. He is the embodiment of all these mean, nasty male characters that he sprinkled in throughout this movie. He might as well be that fucking guy, that dean at the college, who's all like, Oh, fuck you! That, that might as well be him. Really. Because this film is just a massive, giant middle finger to everything that makes Ghostbusters good. And to the entire fan base. And it's a shame that he still hasn't realized that. He's still defending the film and, and acting like it, it didn't deserve the backlash and so on. You brought it upon your fucking self, Paul. Take some fucking responsibility. If he came out and said, I apologize, I handled things poorly... Then I'd have some respect for him. But as far as I know, I haven't read anything where he's done that. So fuck Paul Fagg. I know it's harsh, but you know what? Fuck it. Fuck him. And fuck this movie. And it's written by Katie Dippold and Paul Fagg. Katie, who I like to call Katie Dipstick, because uh, or dipshit, because this uh, screenplay is fucking stupid. It's moronic. And, yes, the script for the original Ghostbusters wasn't, let's just say, super detailed and really in a lot of ways is more of a placeholder for the cast to have fun within that particular sandbox. But this script, it's just xeroxes all of the main beats from the original film you have this new team of ghostbusters most of which were disgraced scientists who were fired from their universities they team up and they get an outsider to get involved and they start their own business the first ghostbusting event occurs in the same kind of structure not the same kind of structure the exact same structure instead of it being the Sedgwick Hotel it's this rock concert you have a climax where there are all these ghosts that have been released throughout the city there's a massive giant uh, ghostly monster that the heroes have to stop I mean, they even cross the fucking streams at one point. There's just too many of the same beats. And it's not like the spin that these writers put on familiar notes 
is something that works. It's about as ugly and hard to deal with as the fucking siren in this movie for the Ectomobile. This film can't even get the Ectomobile siren correctly. I, 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 that still blows me away. It's one of the most iconic sounds out there. It's easy. Just copy the same fucking sound effect. You're trying too hard to be unique and different to the point where you ruin things. I'm sorry. You didn't need to change the siren, especially when it sounds like... Eh, 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 eh. That's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like the most annoying sound in the world from Dumb and Dumber. But it's fitting because this film is every bit as annoying. So yeah, you have the screenplay, which just copies the same fucking beats as the original. The character development, when it is there, there's not much to it. You, They try to inject some new stuff with having uh, some of the characters having some issues with one another, especially with uh, Aaron and Abigail, like they had a falling out. And then throughout the film, they uh, recapture that spark or that connection that they had with one another and they become friends again. So they try to do something different with that, but it just came across as cliched in a different way for me. And, I mean, speaking of the same beats, even the opening of the film is the same. Instead of it being a library, it's some fake haunted house attraction that turns real. <laughs> and you also have a mayor, too, who, in this film, though, he's even more of an asshole I wouldn't even call Lenny that much of an asshole. Like, Lenny was awesome. Lenny was cool. Like, this mayor's a douchebag. Because every guy, every person with a nutsack in this film is a piece of shit. And a big reason for that is due to this script by Katie Dipstick and Paul Fagg. They're to blame for that. Because they were like, oh, you, we, uh... We're so triggered by the reaction to the trailer that we're going to redo rewrites and do all this. We're going to make the, the villain of the film a angry, whiny man-child who lives in, his, lives in a basement. I mean, there might be something to be said. Like, there might be some potential to do something like that if you were clever with it, if you were trying to satirize some elements of that, but it's just so one note and so heavy handed that it's not clever. It's just insulting. And it's a problem that also affects the original cast members who have cameos in this film and the cameos in this movie are just so sad to watch. Like you can tell that Dan Aykroyd didn't want to fucking do this. You could tell that Ernie Hudson didn't have his heart in this film. You could tell Bill Murray was only there for a massive paycheck. I mean, even Annie Potts comes across as a bitch. So, all of the original cast members, except for maybe Sigourney, Weaver's character, Sigourney Weaver, who plays some scientist who's buddies with Holtzman, for the most part, they're all handled... With the opposite of fucking care. I don't know if that's the script that's to blame for that. Or the studio. Or Paul Fagg. I don't know who's to blame. But whoever is to blame for that. It should be busted. In the face. With the proton wand. <sighs> That nastiness that I was talking about earlier, that's a big reason why this film is not any fun. It's not enjoyable. It's not at all a blast. Fun oozes from every frame. What? 
What movie were you watching, Nigel M. Smith? Or and that it's not exhilarating and hilarious from start to finish either. It's like torture. It's busting your balls. With a 10 meter cattle prod. <laughs> so yeah, the nastiness is something that I really hated about this film. Because the first and second movies, there was some cynicism. But it still came, there still was a lot of heart to those films. This is as soulless as the ghosts that you see in this movie. And... All this crap, all this bullshit about how misogynist men are as a whole and how misogynist Ghostbusters fans are and how that just winds up spreading throughout this script with all of these characters being one note sexist fucking stereotypes but in a different way, just sours me on this film so much. I mean, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Yeah, that's a great idea. Am I Nate, your fucking fan base? That's the ticket to success. <laughs> what? Would, I mean, honestly, was this script written by Dickless? Was this script written by uh, Peck? Might as well well have been. I mean, this screen screenplay even has the audacity to make the form of Rowan's destructor as the Ghostbusters logo. And there's a scene in the film where the new Ghostbusters shoot it in the fucking dick with their proton packs. Do I need to say anything else? Probably not. That shows you the exact mindset these writers had when it comes to this new take on Ghostbusters. They did not give a fuck. They had no passion, no care in this franchise they did not want to do things right because if they did they would have never even thought of let alone had a scene like that in the movie but but you know a million fucking wonton jokes yeah that should be in the film scenes where the gals are doing a shitty lame dance number that feels like an eternity yeah let's have that in the movie Let's have the typical Melissa McCarthy shtick where she's fat and she's and she fell down, so it's a laugh riot. Let's have uh, Chris Hemsworth embarrass himself playing a fucking stereotype of a dumb blonde, but this time around it's a it's a dumb male blonde, so I guess it's acceptable. Except if the roles were reversed and it was a dumb blonde female stereotype, the film would get roasted by critics and eaten alive by the same people who gave this film a pass when it came out in 2016 and still give this film a fucking pass and a reach around to this day. I don't understand the defense for this film either. Like, if you like it, that's fine. But the people who are, like, defending it adamantly nowadays... Especially after the release of Afterlife. Like, people did not give it a chance and it was unfairly maligned. No! It was not unfairly maligned. It was maligned fairly. Because it fucking sucked! And it still sucks! And this script sucks! The characters aren't likable. The script does a bad job making you want to connect with any of them when it comes to the supernatural stuff it's not creepy it's not eerie it's not spooky and then when it comes to the finale it's laughable in a different way that I don't think they intended I, I honestly think the writers thought that the Ghostbusters doing flips in slow motion and shooting gun ghosts with dual pistols and 
punching them in the face and blowing them up and shredding them was badass and awesome and cool. Where I'm looking at it and I'm laughing my ass off at it because of how absurd it is. I mean, that's supposed to be a grand epic moment and it's an epic fail because you're like, this is fucking stupid. They're not even busting ghosts anymore. Shoot the ghost logo in the dick. Every every male in this film is a dickhead. <laughs> Just like Paul Fag. Fucking dick face of a director. And yeah, I'm gonna say that, because he is. He's a fucking dick face. Dick face, douchebag, dickless motherfucker. He has no dick because it's on his face. You, it even ruins Slimer. Slimer is all of a sudden now an asshole too who steals the Ectomobile, has a party with other goats and an inexplicable female Slimer for some reason. And he dies. He gets blown up in a nuclear explosion. They don't even save Slimer for the fucking sequel. Oh, you want Slimer? You want to see Slimer again? Well, fuck you. Slimer is dead. <laughs> again. Oh, my God. Oh, and I didn't even mention all the shit farting uh, poop jokes. Yeah, there's a lot of those, too, because that's just the prime, primo, ultimate example of great comedy right there queef jokes God. I don't know if that came from uh, the back or the front I don't fucking care where it came from how about you just leave it there you didn't have to release it God, this film fucking sucks. You got characters talking about how they shit their pants. You got all these gags and these bits of improv that go on forever. I hate this Lionel Rama bullshit. I hate it so much. It's not funny. I don't care about the cat in the back. Shut the fuck up. That's honestly how I felt about a lot of this comedy in this movie you're just like i don't give a shit about you making patrick swayze movie references shut up <laughs> where when the original cast in the first two films when they were conversing with one another it was gold they could read the fucking phone book and i would be entertained by it that's not the case here with the banter and the interactions with the cast in this film. I don't know what some critics are smoking when they're saying, oh, uh, every line that comes out of Holtzman's mouth is an instant classic and instantly quotable. I don't remember a single fucking line she said other than, I, I could think of, uh, uh, what is it, like 10 or 100 uses for a cadaver today? Which is fitting because this film is just... Really, what they did is they dug up the Ghostbusters franchise and just puppeted it around on strings. But, okay, that one. And a fucking Pringles reference. I want you pop. That's not even anything original. She just quoted a massively well-known advertising campaign. <laughs> so yeah, this script is shit. And the cast, the cast here, there is some talent that is available, but none of it is used well because no one in this cast has chemistry with anyone. There's no chemistry present in this film with the cast. 
that's a huge reason why the first Ghostbusters, the original, was so successful. It's a big reason why Ghostbusters 2 is still an enjoyable sequel to this day. It's because of that inherent chemistry that the cast members have with one another. You bought that they were friends. They had this really reliable and strong connection with one another. I don't see that at all with this cast. They seem like they're trying to all do their own individual things. They're all trying to get it in their shtick and their bits. And any moments where it's trying to build some genuine chemistry or connection just feels very uh, fake. Or they're trying either too hard or not hard enough or they don't give a shit. I don't think a lot of these cast members really wanted to be here. I think a lot of them did it for the paycheck and for the exposure of being a part of a reboot of a well-known, well-loved franchise. Some of them probably did it as a favor to Paul Fagg. And that really does show. I know some of these cast members have come out and have echoed a lot of the same bullshit statements that Paul Fagg continues to do to this day about the backlash. But if you look at these cast members individually, they can be funny. They're just not funny in this movie. I mean, you got Melissa McCarthy... Who, yes, her stick is tired and old and was ancient by the time this film was released. But prior to this movie, she was funny. I liked her in Spy, the last film she was in that was directed by Paul Fagg prior to this film. I liked her in The Heat. I even liked her cameo in Bridesmaids. So there was, some, there was something there. It just wasn't utilized in this film. Kristen Wiig, she can be hilarious. She was good in Bridesmaids. I liked her a lot of her sketches on SNL. So she can be funny. She's not here. Kate McKinnon. I'm, di- I'm going to disagree with a lot of the consensus here and argue that she's the actress alongside with Leslie Jones who, from what I've seen isn't really consistently that funny. A lot of her shtick, to me, is completely copied from Stephanie Weir's work in Mad TV. And anything else that she tries to do that isn't just quirky weirdo just doesn't work. And she's been in a lot of awful films. And that's not only counting this movie. She was in Rough Night, which was one of the worst comedies from the year that that film was released, if not the worst comedy of that year. And she was in Masterminds. Kate McKinnon is honestly becoming kind of a kiss of death for a comedy film. And I've just never been that impressed with her. And I know a lot of people loved her performance in this and to each their own. I didn't think she was a spark of genius. I didn't think she was great. I thought she was... Just an annoying weirdo. And she just decided to turn up the awkward weirdo levels to 11. And and I guess for some people that's hilarious. But for me, it's just annoying. I don't want to be around this character. Leslie Jones, from what I've seen from her on SNL, she's very limited in terms of her range uh she really tends to lean in on the angry black woman stereotypes i'm sorry from what i've seen on snl and in a lot of her films she leans really hard into that particular vein um There's been some bits here and there I've seen from her where she's not doing that and she holds her own pretty well. So that's why it's disappointing to see her just lean in even further and even harder into that kind of 
stereotypical character or caricature, really. In a lot of ways, it is a caricature. And that being said, her character, Patty, was the one that was somewhat tolerable at times in comparison to the rest of the cast. Chris Hemsworth, it's an embarrassing role. It's one of the worst performances of his career right alongside with his character in the Vacation reboot. He just played a dumb blockhead. A dumb male bimbo. A himbo. Neil Casey, pathetic. This is your villain. He's meek. Has no screen presence. You half expect him to be twiddling his fingers, you know, like, oh, I'll show those Ghostbusters. Eh. Comes across as like a Scooby-Doo character. Andy Garcia, just there for a paycheck to play some jerk-off mayor who doesn't want to be compared to the mayor from Jaws. Cecily Strong, another character in the film that's acting like a bitch. Michael K. Williams, another dumbass male character alongside Matt Walsh. Charles Dance, very talented actor, loved him a lot of things. Wasted here is some snooty prick at a university. Ed Begley Jr., another jerk, jerkwad, douchebag, Ed Melgr Mulgrave. Uh, maybe he's not a douchebag, but he's, he's an idiot. He's a, he's a simpleton. Uh, Bill Murray is a paranormal debunker. Uh, Dan Aykroyd is some tax dri taxi driver who, uh, who whose soul has died. That scene is so hard to watch. I love Dan Aykroyd. And you could just tell that he was so disappointed with the direction of this franchise. And you can't blame him. Ernie Hudson, Patty's uncle, Sigourney Weaver is Holtzman's mentor, Rebecca Gorin... Annie Potts as some bitchy hotel receptionist. And you even had a random bust of Harold Ramis as Egon for like five seconds. Oh, there's Egon. Oh, hi well, bye Egon. No context either. What a lazy, disrespectful tribute to Harold Ramis. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I I mean, if you were going to do anything, you would think you would put more effort and heart into it than just this throwaway fucking scene for like five seconds that if you blink, you'll fucking miss it. You know what? That's honestly really one scene that in a lot of ways showcases why this film doesn't work and why this film sucks why it's so bad because at its core it was never really something that was made from a place of passion from a place of care from a place of much thought other than dollar signs Paul Fake didn't even want to do this movie he only did it because he was offered a lot of money. Oh, sure, I'll do it now. Now that I get paid. I mean, his original idea was stupid to begin with. Like it can't like the 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 structure, the genesis of this film was just so flawed. His idea was about alien ghosts. Alien ghosts. Some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. Alien ghosts. What did he see? The film Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within? It was like, that's what Ghostbusters should be. God, alien ghosts. And then he gets the job. Only does it for the paycheck. Sleep, sleepwalks his way through... The directing of this movie. The trailer drops. People hate it. Both male and female. Because it looks like garbage. 
It doesn't look funny, and it's a representation of everything that's wrong with modern Hollywood in terms of these reboots that fans did not ask for. And then throws a fucking temper tantrum and a hissy fit and throws lines into the film like, oh, look at the, don't read the comments on, on YouTube. Don't read the video comments. Oh, stupid bitches can't catch no ghosts. Just like you can't make a Ghostbusters movie. You just bust people's balls. Everyone involved in this film really was given a disservice. And what do I mean by that? They, by being associated with this film, they wound up staining their careers forever. Some of these actors and these actresses, this film in a lot of ways killed their career for like a big budget, big cinematic film. Kristen Wiig didn't do a lot after this. She did a few films here and there, but I mean, now she's doing another MacGruber. She's doing a MacGruber show because she's having a hard time washing the stink off from this movie. Leslie Jones, this didn't catapult her into an, an, a successful film career. Her outbursts on Twitter isn't going to do her any favors either. Melissa McCarthy, her star was already starting to wane by this point. And now it honestly might as well be out. And Kate McKinnon, she's in this Tiger King show, which is based on Joe Exotic. But as a big main cast member on a feature film, nope. Have you seen Neil Casey in a lot of things lately? No. So yeah, in a lot, some ways I do feel bad. I, I think these... But at the same time, they signed on. They signed on for this shit. So this is their bed and now they gotta lie in it. Despite how much it stinks. And... The biggest takeaway from this film, other than how soulless of a movie it was from the ground up, is as a comedy, it's just not fucking funny. Yes, women can be funny. But it does not matter who you have in this cast with the way that this film is structured. You could have Goldie Hawn, Lily Tomlin, some of the funniest comedian, female comedians of our time. And this film would still be a epic fucking disaster. Because of everything that I've already entailed in this video. Women can be funny, but they aren't funny in this movie. The women that are in this film. And this film isn't funny. It's not entertaining. It's not fun to watch. The effects aren't amazing either. Oh my god. They're jaw dropping according to some fucking guy. I think it was Collider I think. Jaw dropping effects. Fuck that shit. This looks like shit I saw at Disneyland. This looks, these looks like effects that I, I, that I saw at the Tower of Terror. Don't give me that shit. Jaw dropping my fucking ass. And there's a lot of the effects in this that look cheap as shit. They look so fucking cheap. For a hundred million dollar movie. The props in, in particular. The ghost trap looks like it's a thermos. That you put fucking soup in. The music. The score. What score? Oh, the over the top score by... Uh, um. Theodore Shapiro, which is just loud and bombastic, and and it's trying to make the film epic, and it just makes it more of an epic fail. What the new original songs like uh, "I'm Not Afraid" by Fall Out Boy, which is straight up fucking ear bleeding, 
cancer that one oh how about how about uh the uh editing by brent white and melissa brefferton how about that the editing that doesn't do anything to really help the non-existent comedic timing in this film it just exaggerates and just accelerates the the film's issues with the comedy by just willingly dragging things along or keeping dumb scenes like Kate McKinnon in a fucking wig in the movie because ha ha this is funny because she's wearing a wig wigs are hilarious what are we fucking five or the cinematography by Robert Yeoman which makes the film just look like a kaleidoscope colored pile of barf that and to make matters worse so much worse this film is painfully slow and boring it's so fucking dull for a movie that has all this amount of high energy in terms of the characters and people yelling uh and people running around and bright flashy visuals it's so fucking boring because there's no reason to be invested in anything there's no reason to be invested in these characters because they're either unlikable assholes or they're just so one note and one dimensional and paper thin and the cast isn't doing enough to provide them with engaging personalities or enough charisma to make up for the lack of strong depth for these characters the villain is a joke the jokes themselves just make the experience even more frustrating and incredibly difficult to sit through because it's just one joke after another that just bombs in insane incredible fashion and then you have the whole climax and everything involving the new apocalypse with Rowan and the ghost logo and all this other stuff and the stakes should feel high but they feel very low and if the characters not being fleshed out enough or full of enough depth or personality isn't bad enough the overall plot is just not consistently engaging too much of it is too similar to what you've already seen before in the franchise and the new stuff is just men are assholes or other elements or other things that just don't really work if it had a new spin on things that felt fresh and innovative and respectful to the source material that would be one thing but that's not the case here this film tries to just be the first movie but with a few different things switched around and a lot of bad jokes thrown in and it thinks that that's enough to entertain you and the film also doesn't take itself seriously enough which is where a lot of the best humor came from in the first and second films in the franchise it was funnier because it was played straight in this film it's played like a zany goofball comedy and if the zany goofball comedy isn't well done well it's just a fucking train wreck the proton back explodes in your face and it's not a fun experience it's like all of your molecules exploding at the speed of light it's just one of those movies that should not have been made 
they should have done Ghostbusters 3 or what Ghostbusters Afterlife is currently. There was no reason to do this. It was a mistake from the start. Should have been shelved. But instead, they wanted to get on a soapbox. They wanted to get on a pedestal. They wanted to make a statement. And the only statement they made is... One that was resoundingly clear. That everyone involved with this film just did not know what the fuck they were doing. And if they did know what the fuck they were doing, the more disturbing revelation is that they deliberately did everything on purpose. They shut off the power grid and blew up the firehouse. And in this case, blew up the franchise out of fucking spite. And after seeing this film again and reading all the controversy and all of the backlash and all of the fighting and all of the bullshit I honestly think they might have done just that they nuked the franchise on purpose this film it truly is awful it's atrocious it's stunningly terrible on all fronts and I'm sick of talking about it. I never want to watch this film again. I never want to sit through this torture again. My balls have been busted enough. And I really don't know what else to say. I don't. So yeah, thanks for watching uh, my epic rant redux on uh, Ball Busters 2016. And as always... I'll see you later. See ya.